Okay, so the next set of multiple choice questions, 19 to the end. Uh, start with this one that says base your questions 19 to 23 in the following graph, which represents the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons as a function of incident electromagnetic frequencies for two different photoemissive surfaces. So we have metal A and metal B across the bottom is frequency, up the side is your EK max. So this looks like the graphs that we've done when we were doing no our notes, okay? All right, so on the back side of the sheet, it says the slope of each line is equal to, well, hopefully you got that one, Planck's constant. The threshold frequency for metal A is, so you can just go back to the graph and read it right off. So the threshold frequency is 1, but it's not just 1, because down here it says that the bottom is in hertz, which is whatever the number is, times 10 to the 14th. So the threshold frequency is 1 times 10 to the 14th hertz, which, if we're lucky, will be one of the choices. Look at that, it is choice 1. The work function for metal B is closest to, so to get the work function, you have to go back here and get the threshold frequency. So for it, it's 3 to the 14th and then do WO equals HFO. So 3 times 6.62, 3 to the 14th, times 6.626 to the negative 34. That should give you 2 to the negative 19, so choice 2. Compared to the work function for metal B, the work function for metal A is, well, FO for A is smaller than the FO for B, so WO, which is equal to H times FO, should also be smaller because you're multiplying both of them by the constant H. So it should be 1 less. Monochromatic light with a period of 2 to the negative, is that 15 or 13? Got to move to 15 seconds is incident upon both metals. So from the period, you can get the frequency, right? Because remember from grade 11, frequency is just equal to 1 over F. So 2 to the negative 15, and then do 1 over that. And it gives you a frequency of 5 to the 14th. Compared to the energy of the photoelectrons emitted by A, the energy of the photoelectrons emitted by B, you didn't even need to do the math, because if you're shining the same F on both surfaces, remember EK max is equal to HF minus WO, so the WO is smaller for A, the F is not changing, so if the WO is smaller for A, the EK max should be bigger for A and smaller for B. So this one says, compared to the energy emitted by A, the energy emitted by B should be greater. I think I did that right. Uh, both compared to the energy of the photoelectrons. No, sorry. So the WO is smaller for A, so the energy, the EK max is bigger. Sorry, the EK max for A is bigger because WO is smaller. The EK max for B is smaller because the WO is bigger. And this says compared to the energy of A for the photoelectrons, the energy of B should be less. Sorry, I was doing it for WO. All right, uh, next set. Base your answers 24 to 26 on the diagram, which represents monochromatic, one color, one wavelength light, incident upon a photoemissive surface A. Each, of, each photon has 8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules of energy, so that's EP or HF. B represents the particle emitted when a photon strikes surface A. So what is the particle? It should be an electron. This is the photoelectric effect. If the work function of the metal is 3.2 to the negative 19 joules, what is the energy of particle B? So this is your HF, and this is your WO, so just subtract them, and you should get 4.8 to the negative 19, right? 8 minus 3.2 is 4.8, so choice 2. The frequency of the incident light is approximately, so you would do EP, this 8 to the negative 19, is equal to HF, and divide your 8 to the negative 19 by H by 6.626 to the negative 34. And when you do, you should get choice 1, 1 1.2 to the 15th. Which formula may be, may be used to compute the energy of a photon? 
Okay, at this point, hopefully, you remember the E equals HF one. Compared to the energy of the photons of blue light, the energy of the photon of red light is what? So you need to go back to this little chart. Blue light has a shorter wavelength, which means it has a higher frequency than red. So red has a lower frequency. So now we go back to the question, which says, Compared to the energy of blue light, the energy of red light, ener red has a lower frequency, so red should have a lower energy, so it should be less. Number 29, the energy of a photon varies directly with wavelength, E equals HF. It would be inversely, sorry, directly with frequency, number 2, it would be inversely with wavelength, okay? E equals HF. 30. All of the following particles are traveling at the same speed. Which one has the greatest wavelength? So this is de Broglie's wavelength, right? Lambda equals h over mv. So if the v's are all the same, then it'll be the masses that'll change the wavelength. And it wants to know which one will have the greatest wavelength. The one that has the greatest wavelength should be the one that has the tiniest mass. So we know a proton is 1.673 to the negative 27. Alpha particles are the two protons and two neutrons together, so they're definitely larger. Neutron is 1.675 to the negative 27, and the electron is 9.109 to the negative 31. So the electron would have the greatest wavelength. Okay, next one. If wave properties of a particle are difficult to observe, it's probably because of the large mass, right? The larger the mass, the smaller the wavelength, the harder it's going to be to see. Next column. Which graph best represents the relationship between the energy of a photon and its wavelength? Okay, so, sorry, I'm just trying to get this. So, we know E equals HF, and we know F is equal to C over lambda. So E is equal to HC over lambda. So they're inversely proportional. So as lambda gets bigger, H, uh, E should get smaller. And that would be choice two. As the wavelength of a ray of light increases, the momentum does what? So remember the equation for momentum, P equals H over lambda. So it's saying as the wavelength increases, the momentum should decrease. Okay, compared to the momentum of blue light, the momentum of red light. So now we need to go back. We need to say blue light has a smaller wavelength than red. And so compared to the momentum of blue light, which has a smaller wavelength, the momentum of red light, which has a larger wavelength, the momentum of red light should be less. Choice one. And the last one, which is conserved when a photon collides with an electron? Both momentum and energy. Okay, both momentum and energy are conserved. All right, there are all the multiple choice. I hope you got them all right.